Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the synthesis of esters. Uh, one of the most straightforward ways to synthesize esters is through the reaction of a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. This reaction requires an acid catalyst, and very frequently that acid is sulfuric acid. Uh, and putting it in brackets to represent that this is added as a solution, uh, usually to the alcohol as a solvent. Uh, and very frequently this reaction works well with primary alcohols, less well with secondary alcohols, and tertiary alcohols undergo dehydration under these conditions. So not necessarily the most universal way to make esters. And this follows the acidic mechanism. And this reaction has a name, so you might you might encounter the Fischer esterification uh, in your travels. And, and so you know what it is now. Uh, this reaction works out pretty well, but as the molecules get more complicated, maybe maybe these are things you don't want to do. This is pretty uh, can get pretty intense. You reflux it in, in alcohol and then some other terrible things. Uh, if there are functional groups that react with strong acid or can be dehydrated by sulfuric acid, there's there's trouble. And uh, this tends not to work like with tertiary alcohols. Uh, and I know this from, from personal experience. My, my undergraduate organic instructor gave me this combination to do in lab. And um, after adding the appropriate amount of sulfuric acid and heating it and collecting all of the distilled water that, that the water that distilled out of the reaction mixture, I uh, recovered 100% of my carboxylic acid. And that's because the the terpbutanol eliminated. Uh, so, so tertiary alcohols, no good. So we don't do we don't do this with tertiary alcohols. Uh, that's not to say that you can't make these these esters. You just don't do it this way. Um, for some of the reactions that are challenging. It's better to convert the carboxylic acid into the acid chloride using thionyl chloride. And now you can react with um, the corresponding alcohol. And get Uh, the you know the terp butyl ester that you want, or you could react with the alkoxide or, or whatever. So the reaction of acid chlorides and and alcohols are neutral mechanism. Uh, and if you're wondering what I mean, an acidic mechanism and nucleate neutral mechanism, I'm referring back to an earlier video uh, where I defined these mechanisms. Mechanism. What am I? Uh, another route uh, that you will sometimes see, and this one only this really works well for some kinds of esters but not others, is to to recognize that the carboxylate anion is, uh, you know, is is a decent nucleophile. So if you deprotonate your carboxylic acid with say sodium hydroxide. And then react it with a, an appropriate uh, kind of electrophile, something that's got a leaving group. Generally, primary carbons are best here. And you can do this reaction as an SN2 reaction. And make esters this way. Um, Uh, a slight variation uh, of this particular pathway is a way to make methyl esters using diazomethane, which is this sort of terrifying, and it's only terrifying because I know that it's, it's actually a fairly dangerous compound to handle. You know, make methyl esters. 
And, you know, the N2 actually is, is a leaving group leaves as, as nitrogen gas. So this behaves itself pretty well. Um, one last variation that I wanted to just talk about in use of coupling reagents. Uh, sort of sort of inspired by the the formation of amides, especially in solid phase peptide synthesis. Uh, there's been a lot of work in adapting reactions like that to the formation of esters from carboxylic acids and alcohols, uh, and not using concentrated sulfuric acid and not requiring you to heat the reaction uh, or, or anything else. And so uh, a sort of typical set of reagents are DCC and DMAP. So let me let me draw just draw the ester product here, and then I'll, I'll define what those things are. Uh, DCC is uh, dicyclohexyl carbodiamide. So dicyclohexyl carbodiamide. Okay? And the structure of that thing is... So you kind of have uh, uh, nitrogen double bond, carbon double bond. Nitrogen has cyclohexyl groups on it. And DMAP equals n n amino pyridine And the structure of that... And molecule is this, and, and this is actually a pretty cool reaction. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the mechanism pretty quickly, uh, but I need to delete some other stuff so I have room. And I'm just gonna abbreviate the cyclohexyl groups because actually there are other kinds of carbodiamide, so these are gonna become ours. Uh, so. So first off, dimethyl and then dimethyl aminopyridine is a base, and it mediates. Uh, so we get deprotonation of the alkoxide anion. And I'm just gonna or deprotonation of the car carboxylic acid to make a carboxylate anion, and my uh, generic carbodiimide in here. This thing is an electrophile, and so our, our uh, carboxylate anion can react with it. There we go. And one of the carbon nitrogen pi bonds breaks, and then you get an intermediate. So I don't have a lot of space horizontally, you get an intermediate that looks like this. And it picks up a proton, uh, so I'm I'm kind of skipping out on some of the proton transfer steps um, for the for the sake of space and time. All right, this thing now is a pretty pretty activated leaving group. And you might expect that our alcohol actually is is the nu next nucleophile, but it but. Uh, some some studies of this reaction have actually shown that the the dimethyl aminopyridine is the 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 next nucleophile. So this, this thing comes in, attacks the carbonyl carbon, carbon oxygen pi bond shifts up. And you get loss of leaving groups. So I'm not going to end up drawing the full nucleophilic acyl substitution. Mostly because, uh, again, I don't want to. I don't have a lot of room, but eventually, some people some people abbreviate these two steps coming together like like this. I don't always like this, but I I can kind of understand that the idea that we're representing uh, a, a continuous flow of electrons, and so then it just happens that uh, DMAP or the the pyridine compound is a better nucleophile 
than the alcohol. And then it also happens to be a better leaving group than the urea that comes off. So here's, here's the other leaving group. So you actually make this urea, which depending on what R is, can even be water soluble to facilitate purification. Uh, the cyclohexyl version isn't particularly water soluble. And then finally, you get one more nucleophilic acyl substitution with the alcohol. Make the ester and regenerate an amino pyridine, which can go back into the, the, the cycle. So it's catalytic in dimethyl amino pyridine, it's stoichiometric in carbo on the carbodiamide. And, and yeah, I'm simplifying some of the mechanism steps because I wanted to, to get to the end here on the amount of space that I had. Uh, but it's a pretty cool reaction. So this concludes my video on the synthesis of exters. I will be moving on to the, the reactions of exters in the next video. Thank you for watching.